Plaintiff Ronald Joe Gannick says the defendant is his son-in-law's brother, and Ronald claims he has had a rough life due to his drug addiction. Ronald is suing because he gave the defendant a loan to buy a truck, but he has yet to be repaid. Defendant Michael Cohn says he started using drugs and alcohol when he was 13 years old and says he struggled with his addiction on a daily basis. Michael says he has now been sober for five years and tries to help other addicts who are struggling. Michael is countersuing for defamation of character. Start with you. Uh, sir, this is my wife, Sandra. She's with me here today to support my case. I'm from originally from Detroit, Michigan. I understand right. uh, about a mile from where you lived, Herman Gardens. That's where I grew up. You're right. Yes, the sir. housing uh, projects. All yes, right. Sir. Where are you? Uh, Warren and Southfield. That's right up the street. Yes, sir. We used to have to fight with the white folks down there. Yes. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? But no, they used to have it on television right. in Detroit with the, um, you weren't in Dearborn. That was a mile or two away from you. So yes, you weren't part of that. But am I right or wrong? They used to have racial uh, Your Honor, um, actually, uh, I left before all that started. I'm 70 years old. Okay. I'm now living in Alabama. I'm a big Alabama fan. And tell me how you know the defendant here and what type of friendship. Well, uh, Michael is the, the brother of my son-in-law. And over the years, Michael has been in and out of our house. He's a big Auburn fan, and being an Alabama fan, oh, there's yeah. some rivalry there yeah, that, no. that's uh, yeah. big in the state of Alabama. Other than Cam Newton, you know, and Charles Barkley. Other than that, Auburn now. <laughs> and, and what type of relationship have you all had other than the contemptuous uh, relationship on sports? Normal family relationships. Michael's been to my house several times. I've been to his, and we both meet at my daughter's home. Over the years, Michael's had a hard life. He's been in and out of drugs. He must have grown up in the Herman Gardens area, too. I don't know, sir. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just uh, saying that, but I'm not quite being funny because those folks who grew up there in the housing projects that I grew up in and they were one mile from you, about 90 percent, at least of my friends, are dead in prison or on drugs. Mm -hmm. It turned around. What year did you leave? 62, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it didn't turn into 10 years later. Right. When you were there, it was a beautiful place. Yes, so sir, well. I see why you say you didn't see all the racial unrest. And it was 90% uh, Caucasian at that time, Correct. the housing projects. Then it became 100% African-American, people living in poverty, nobody with jobs, dumped drugs and guns. It had a murder nearly every week. Wow. It was called Vietnam. Right. And so, um, tell me some of your background. Well, like he said, I am a, uh, I am a believer in Jesus Christ, and I recover. I struggle with drugs and alcohol okay. on a daily basis. When did you start? Uh, probably about the age of 13 or so. Okay. What uh, city were you living in? Birmingham. And okay. drugs has no preference. That's They're right. everywhere. So. Or boundaries. No. That's or who. Right. Mm -hmm. Or who. Uh, I struggle with this. I struggle with this problem on a daily basis. You what know, type I can of only deal one day at a time. Drugs, uh, alcohol mostly. You know, as a teenager, I tried various types of different drugs: acid, meth, uh, quaaludes, ASs, whatever. How long but, have you been in recovery? Or uh, been attempting? September twenty second, two thousand seven is my anniversary date. I okay. just just picked up five five years here. Good, oh, good. Without using. Without. Good. Congratulations. I also, I also uh, am a, uh, in, involved in church and uh, a minister of a re recovery program at my church. Now, it didn't take off really well this time around, but uh, we're going to try it again and hopefully Good. somebody will get it. All right. So. Good to hear that. Now, you know, you have to go to a Holy Ghost church to really fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 Do I've they been, dance at your church? Uh, <laughs> no. Do they speak in tongues? Uh, no. No, no. Do you fall out? I go to a Baptist church. <laughs> You don't fall I'm a Southern out? Baptist. Oh, well, yeah. Southern Do Baptist. Your, keep doing your best, but right, when that right. don't work, I'm going to send you over to the sanctified church. <laughs> I have been take there care too. of you. All right. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Tell me how he owes. Tell me how he owes you three thousand dollars unpaid loan. 
Well, sir, in uh, February of 2011, he called me and said, Ron, I need to talk to you about something. Came over to my house and said he needed $3,000 to buy a Chevrolet truck. I had uh, $500 in my pocket, so I had to go to the credit union. I gave him $3,000. He signed a promissory note. I have a copy of oh, it with okay. me. okay. Let's see it, please. Did you walk around $500? No, nah, I don't walk around $500 anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Money. I should have moved out of the projects early. <laughs> I'd have had me 500. Go ahead. And in that note, he stated that he would pay me within 90 days. He didn't. He didn't call. He didn't do anything within those 90 days. In June of that year, we talked and I asked him to pay me interest of $120, which he did. In fact, when I met him, he was carrying a Bible and going to uh, a Good. church meeting. Mm -hmm. Good. And then I didn't hear from him again until September of that year when we talked and he actually paid or deposited $120 in the bank. And this is all interest. This was nothing against the principal. So from September of, of 2011 until now, it's been extremely difficult to get a hold of Michael. He's been dodging me. He's been in church. Yes, sir. <laughs> Seven days. He goes we don't go to, to the, the same uh, church. <laughs> goes to the Bible study. They got, you all have camp meeting or tent, <laughs> tent service during the summer. All night church, right? Tell me where you've been, sir. Why haven't you paid him his 3000 and do you owe him? Well, he, he, he's right. I did sign the promissory note, and the, the way that he did loan me the money, I would, had just finished a... Uh, subcontractor job, uh, electrical job, and was waiting on a retainage payment. Mm -hmm. um, that payment still hasn't come. That's been over two years. So uh, why haven't you sued the person who owes you? <laughs> it's it's small a little, claims it, court. This company is out of Texas, and it's a little more okay. difficult than... than okay, well, different state? <laughs> yes, All right. But uh, at the end of the 90 days, I did contact uh, Ron, and I thought we had an agreement to, to paint a vehicle, a rear that he had at the time. In exchange for the $3,000? Yes. You were to paint right. one of his vehicles? I thought that's what was going to happen, but that never took place. But you and all discussed it? it. Right, right. And did he agree to it? I did not agree to it, okay. sir. Okay. Uh, but anyway, as far as me dodging, I don't answer. He, when he calls, he, his number comes up unknown. I don't answer unknown Why? phone calls. Oh. Well, I just don't. I mean, who are you running from other than him? <laughs> <laughs> no one. You got a no warrant one. on you, sir. You got a warrant? No, on sir. <laughs> no, sir. I just don't know who you know who's going to be on those. I, I, but I'm I'm not dodging anyone. I answer my phone. Well, I have been here lately, so you um, have been lately. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. So now, what are you saying about his money? You know. Uh, <laughs> I started receiving text messages uh, from his uh, daughter, you know, that I needed to man up and be a man, and, and so much has accused me as going back to drugs and alcohol. I've even, even my nephews uh, uh, have come to me and approached me and asked me, are you back on the stuff because you're not doing this and you're not doing that? And, and uh, you know, it's, it's really been... Uh, hurting, so is that your my, defamation counterclaim? Yes. Is that his yes. daughter? Yes. So what uh, has he done? You can't sue I, him for defamation for what his daughter has said about you. I've never heard nothing wrong out of this but man. You can't sue him for defamation. You must sue his daughter. Right. And he seems like a decent gentleman. Great guy. He's a good relative to loan $3,000. Yes, he is. I won't loan my relatives $3,000. <laughs> he I probably won't anymore. I won't do you it know, either. know, let me give you a little insight. If you have that type of money, just instead of loaning it to him, because as you see, you're not going to get it back. You just yes. give him half. You just say, well, I can't loan you that, but I can give you half and so they'll be about the same or a third or whatever. You don't have to pay me back. Yes. Then I make them feel like you've done something for them, but never give people everything they want because half of what they're asking you for, they're going to go to the mall with. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to take right. half of what they need and use it on what they need and then the other half that they didn't need that they ask you for, they're taking that to the mall. How much did you take to the mall? Watch this. <laughs> None. Yeah, you took too long to answer that. <laughs> $3,000 is your judgment. All right, have a good day. 
hopefully we can restore this. It's going to continue. <laughs> it's it really wasn't well. that bad to begin with. Still no. not, Morgan. <laughs>